What we're getting with Faux is a, is a story about a rural couple and who they lead a quiet existence and one night, uh, out of the blue, someone arrives. Hen? Expecting anyone? This visitor is a man named Terence and he's coming with news that one of them in the couple, Junior, the husband, according to Terence, randomly selected to take part in this new initiative. Do you want to live mundane lives or do you want to be part of something special and unique? You've been selected to live up there. The story kind of evolves from there, how their life changes after they get this news. <laughs> okay, well, you're wasting your time because we, we haven't even been on an airplane and she dated. I should, I should clarify. I'm talking about you here, Junior. Only you. The heart of it really was how we explored this marriage and how marriages can decay over time. And also um, Han, the central character within that, who is just fighting. She really understands that life is precious and time is precious and she's really trying to fight for agency. And I really love what she represented. I've always had this fantasy that there's something else out there for me. The way some relationships can unfold and how narratives can be written within a relationship and how identities, singular identities, can somehow be usurped by the whole relationship. And that was intriguing to me and I wanted to explore that more, so I started to write about it. Do you feel you know how she would react in every situation? That type of relationship felt confining and the opposite of that confining would, would be space, which is literally endless, it goes on forever. And so I kind of knew then at that moment, this probably could be my space story too, even if it was just space as a metaphor. I need to have an intimate understanding of your marriage, the good and the bad. I promise it's confidential, it's between you and me. Somebody just had read it and thought of me and, said, and, and contacted me and said, Garth, you should read this book. So I just went and bought it and I read it in one sitting. Garth threw his hat in the ring as someone who really wanted to direct it and I could tell early on just from interactions with him, how passionate he was about it, how much the material meant to him. And so he, to me, I, I was familiar with his work and once I actually met Garth and I really liked him, um, I, I realized this, this was the person I wanted to work with and collaborate with. And, and from there it kind of evolved to he and I actually writing together, you know, and adapting the story. Ian and I decided just to get in the room and at least connect and go through the novel and just start, I was really curious, I had a lot of questions. So as we're in that process, we were just page turning and talking about the story and very quickly this friendship developed. Um, we had a lot in common um, and we just started to develop these ideas for what the film could be. And we now got to revisit the material in a new way and use each other, you know, talk to each other and explore new ideas. And, and um, he was very open to that and we trusted each other and uh, it was a long process and challenging, but one that I really enjoyed and, and I think he did too. We're going to ensure Hen has company while you're away. We're going to replace you. I don't want a robot living with my wife. I, I really love this couple oh, and Hen for me was someone that represented, um, you know, she's someone that has a, a great playfulness and curiosity. She was an empath, you know, she really connected with nature and understood our connection with the universe and Sir Ronan has that beautiful quality in her spirit. He doesn't really see me anymore. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't be telling you this. Sir Ronan was first to be cast as Han. I, I couldn't believe we were even sending it to her. I thought she would be perfect for it. And I, I you know, tried to tell myself, oh, it's probably not gonna happen. I didn't wanna get too excited and think that maybe that was even a possibility. So to hear that she responded to the material, responded to the character of Han and, and really wanted to embrace it, it was thrilling. Do you really want to leave her here all alone, day after day? And next, obviously, then Garth met Paul a few months later in, in Australia. He, Paul happened to be in Sydney at the time. He had read the material and, and really liked it and really wanted to take on the challenge of playing Junior. Paul Mescal, he's both alpha and feminine. He has all these beautiful qualities and putting them together, I thought, worked really beautifully. They had such a beautiful chemistry together. But Aaron Pierre, just brought such a beautiful angle and such beautiful truths to everything Terence was doing. It was really, really surprising. I really loved that. 
I encourage you to use this opportunity to act on your instincts. He has such a presence, and, and to see again what he is able to pull off in some of the choices he makes throughout the film, very provocative and nuanced and complex, and, and all of them to me bring something special and they go places. They're very bold in their, in their choices, and I just, I'm so grateful to them. I feel like they've heightened this material so much and really exceeded any expectations I had going into it. Whatever we decide, we'll be together.